Connie Fuchsa. I am Connie Fuchsa. I'm a business coach that helps um, helps my customers learn about all the things that they already know in their head and help them share it in a way that their customers can understand what they what value they offer. So I am doing these live entrepreneurial series interviews because I want you guys to meet some pretty amazing people that have been doing a long time sometimes long, sometimes short, they saw an opportunity, they took advantage of it, they really jumped into it and they figured out how to navigate through the struggles and the difficult wins to get to the successful side and how they constantly do that every day. And this afternoon, my guest is somebody I've known for quite some time. She is such an inspiration and so amazing and I really appreciate your time, Deanne. Thanks so much for being on with us. This is really fun, this is exciting. Awesome, well, I am so happy to have you. So. Um, so Deanne, to begin with, you know, I mean, I know you really well, but those watching really don't. And so tell us who you are. Tell us, um, you know, where, you know, where you started, what you're doing, why you're doing it. How come you've been doing it for so long? Just tell us your story a little bit for this to get started. Okay. Well, I am currently a, a licensed real estate agent in Maryland. I am with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, McNellis Group Properties, and I've been there for um, a couple of years now. Uh, I am. Um, consider myself a uh, trusted advisor, uh, a real estate professional, really a, a resource, a counselor for both uh, sellers and buyers. And um, I've been in the uh, sales and service industry for years, for a long time. So um, a couple of different stints in real estate, but um, I started my career out of college actually in broadcasting. And I spent about uh, I probably about 13 years in um, in uh, the news business. Wow, and, um, I didn't know that. I cool. know a lot of people think that. Oh, that's so exciting! But it's not really that exciting. <laughs> <And> it's, <laughs> it's a lot of um, a lot of the uh, things that you hear about the news media is, are true. So I got disillusioned with that, and I thought I could use my um, my service uh, mentality in a better way. So I have uh, had a broad history of, of different sales and service um, positions, but uh, twice in real estate, also in mortgage lending, um, spent quite a few years in um, senior living, and uh, which is, gave me just a wealth of um, experience with relationships and with different um, dynamics in relationships. So that was you know exciting in time, but, um, Twice I've found myself back in real estate. So um, a lot of people say, well, you know, what brought you to real estate? And it's, well, if you've, uh, if you've ever been on the bad end of a real estate transaction, then you know that it can be very, very stressful. So twice I found myself in that position and I said to myself, I could probably do this better. And um, ultimately I made the decision to, to make it my career. Nice, that's really interesting. You know. Um it's funny that you say that because what I find uh, with lots of entrepreneurs is exactly this, you know, uh, the whole idea around that is finding, figuring out a need or a niche or a problem that somebody has and know that you can fix that. So even if you already have an established business, whatever that business is, when I talk to people, when I'm working with them coaching, that's one thing that we really talk about is what's your customer's problem. And so in your case, you decided to make a career move based on that problem two different times that happened to you. And so it really solidified for you. This is something that you really needed to take care of. Yeah, actually, the first time I was a buyer and my realtor was just not listening. And the second time I was a seller and um, Again, I, there was, the communication was awful. So I said, um, I, I really have you know, gone into it now, uh, realizing that um, being a good communicator and being a good listener is really probably one of the primary skills that you can take into any, of the, any industry, really. Yeah, I love this because you started out by telling us you're a counselor and advisor and people don't usually say as a realtor, you're a counselor and advisor. But what I love about that and having some of my previous history in a similar area as you is one of the things that people don't understand about real estate is everything. Right. They know, you know <laughs> they look at you to find a house, but they don't understand any of the rest of the process and how it works. They think they might, but they 99% of the people don't. So right. being that advisor is huge. And you saw that need exactly um, 
expound when you were doing that, that people weren't get you giving you the information you needed to understand what was going to happen next and how it was going to happen. Exactly. And every deal is different. So everything you give one person is going to be totally different to another person. Right, but the counselor right. side, I think, is really important, too, because I know that you're not only giving them information, but you're giving them your expertise about the, you know, something that you may be confronting them. Um, right. So tell me a little bit more about that, because obviously those things can be different no matter what situation you're talking about. So tell us a little bit about that. Right. Well, every situation is different. So, but one, some things are consistent, um, you know, in a real, first of all, real estate is probably the major transaction or major purchase that someone's going to make. Mm -hmm. So you're dealing with most of the time relationships, uh, whether it be uh, two people buying a home together or a, a single person with their family as a, you know, a, a sounding board, but there's always people involved. The children have a say so. Um, so there's a lot of relationships and a lot of people in a buyer or seller's ear telling them, giving them all sorts of information. Then you're dealing with money. Uh, okay. So that is always a, you know, a very volatile situation. Um, and now you are coupling, you're putting a lot of stress on top of that and a time frame and a bunch of information that people don't understand and people don't know what they don't know. And sometimes are a little bit um, hesitant to, to uh, disclose that they don't know. So then you have those, um, all those emotions, you know, fear, insecurity, the lack of confidence, that type of thing. So it gets to be a very befuddled mess sometimes. <laughs> so my job, my job is to get it, you know, let's straighten out what's what. Let's, you know, put everything in its correct category and let me, let me lead you through this process and kind of, you know, counsel you along the way as you make these small little decisions. You know, you're not having to make the whole big decision at one time. Each, each step of the process is a decision. And uh, whether that's, you know, choosing, you know, what neighborhood you're going to be in or where you're going to move to later or who your lender is going to be or your title company or where should I get homeowner's insurance or, you know, where do the kids are going to go to school and how am I going to, what's my commute going to be like? So these are all things that we have to really, you know, think about. And um, it's fun. It's fun to, to help solve those problems and keep everybody with a level head, <laughs> you know? Well, I like a couple of things. Well, I like all of what you said, but a couple of things stuck out to me that I was making notes about. And so one of them was this reoccurring theme in this whole entrepreneurial conversation that I have with people is listening. And in your situation, it's very important. It's probably even like ranks up there in one or two because you, every single person, as you said, in this whole family dynamics has um, a need or a want or a, mm -hmm. an, a wish. And so you listening and then navigating through what options are available based on the is just, this is an amazing thing that, you know, people just don't think about realtors in the entrepreneurial sp uh, spectrum the same way because, you know, they're an individual person working with you and helping you find a home, but you're in your business. This is a business where you're creating this, this relationship with people. And when you said relationships between those people, you know, you, it's also the relationship you're building as the counselor listening to them. And I love hearing that. So tell us a little bit more about you building that relationship with your people and, um, and listening and trying to poke through right. what things they're trying to share with you. Well, I think most importantly is that I go into um, the relationship. Well, let me, let me just back up a minute. You know, when you asked about who I am, okay. And this, this may sound a little um, off to some people, but I don't care. So I am a Christian. And so I approach exactly. every relationship. <laughs> Absolutely. I approach every relationship that I go into really with the, the uh, basis uh, out of love. I'm going into it with the spirit of love for whatever. And, and so that's it's kind of a, a different approach that I take that I'm going to go in and see how I can you know, these are people, they're real people that have mm -hmm. real feelings. And so I want to, I don't want to just be there for a transaction. I don't want to just be there to, you know, unlock the door. My job is to build that, that relationship so that they can trust me that I've got their best interest um, in, in mind and, and at work. And you, you can't get there if you're not listening <laughs> because Correct. So, I mean, I don't know how many times, I mean, you probably, how many times you say, you say one thing and the other person hears another thing. So Absolutely. you have to really be clear on, well, what I heard you say was this. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I heard you say you wanted a first floor master bedroom, but you're pointing out homes that are all have a master on the second floor. So let's, let's, you know, dig into that. What do we really want? Yeah. What is the need here? You know, that's just a simple example, but one that pops up all the time. <laughs> nice, nice. So um, uh, as you're talking about this and you're, it as relates to being a business owner, because you are, can you talk about the realtor side of being a business owner for a minute? Because, you know, we've talked to a couple of realtors and um, er, different people have different ways of navigating through this. But when you decided to take on this career, um, it's a lot different than people understand in the respect that you really are your own business owner. And so there was probably a lot of things that you really weren't aware of that you needed to be in charge of um, running your own business. So tell us well, about that. That is true. And I, you know, as, as these times um, are, are highlighting for many of us, my uh, technology skills have, have, have continually have to be polished. So um <laughs> That's one thing, you know, just the uh, learning technology, uh, you know, it's one thing to learn real estate and learn your market and learn, um, you know, all the ins and outs of uh, an actual neighborhood or um, uh, development. But now you, I have to be an expert in marketing. I have to be an expert in digital marketing, mm -hmm. print marketing. Um, <laughs> you know, I have to understand, um, you know, the laws of the, you know, um, of the waterways and the um, different, you know, restrictions about um, different, you know, where to build a site or, you know, construction, new construction. So there's so many things that when I got into this, it's not just about buying or selling a home. I mean, I need to know the laws. Mm -hmm. I need to understand the covenants and restrictions, how the counties work. And um, so it's a lot, it's a lot. But right now my, my biggest challenge I would think would be with technology because it's ever changing and, um, and, <laughs> It just seems like um, right now we have to be on top of it. Well, you're, let's just say you're definitely not alone. Everybody is having trouble. Everybody's having to learn how to do all of these, you know, lives, interviews, Zoom calls, you know, all mm -hmm. these things. So don't, uh, you know, one thing I like to share with people is I do a lot of live work and people always say, you know, what if I mess up? What if I don't have the right background? What if I don't, la, 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 la. <laughs> At the end of the day, just be you because yes. that you person is the person that they hired and the person that they want to work with. So yes. it's okay if things get messed up because we're not on broadcast television and we're never <laughs> going to be, we don't want to be. And those people are even having their own struggles right now. So right. <laughs> one of my favorite ones that when this all first started was, um, watching Jimmy Kimmel with his kids climbing over his head <laughs> doing the whatever tonight show. And I thought, you know what? We're all in this, you know? So, right. so if I could say anything to you about that, that's what I would say is, to, you know, <laughs> learn as much as you can and keep it going, but don't overthink it because you being the person you are is the reason people work with you. So right. let me, um, let me talk with you just a little bit about, you know, you were talking about how you had to learn all these different things. And as an entrepreneur, one thing that I think that people don't understand when they decided to decide to jump after an opportunity, or even after they've been in it for a long time and they have to pivot in a different direction, as you're talking about with technology, is they don't um, take advantage of uh, the opportunity to create partnerships with different organizations, different people. Um, right create relationships. Like you said, partnerships and relationships are really important because you don't have to always be an expert in all of these things. That's what other people bring to the table that you can work with. So tell us a little bit about how you've right. decided that what things you were able to share, give up, work with other people on and how that's changed your business because you were able to move forward and maybe focus in areas that were more productive for you. Um, so, um, I will say that I do have a number of professional relationships that I can um, either make a referral to or just go to as a resource or mm -hmm. send uh, folks to as a resource. And without that, I would, well, I just would be less than because I, I just would not be able to offer my clients what I can because I don't know everything. I don't know. I don't know anything about plumbing, <laughs> you know? Um, so there are certain things that I am an expert in and there are others that I'm clearly not, but I will say, and, and I'm not sure if I'm answering the question, but I will say that one of the decisions that uh, as a realtor uh, and one of the things that I did not know going into the business was how important the right brokerage is to be with. And so I had, a, a, I had been with a number of different brokerages for short periods of time. And, and I made my home with Berkshire Hathaway home services, McNeil's group properties. 
And that has been a game changer for me because the, the not only is the, um, the company so well respected and well connected and has the best technology for me to use, but the brokerage itself is just an incredible resource. So the broker, Chris McNellis, is uh, you know, so well versed in, in um, the Southern Maryland region and waterfront and luxury homes and first time home buyers, everything, you know, land. So this having her as a resource has been just tremendous for me. And I don't find that in other uh, a lot of other brokerages that you really have that meaningful relationship with your broker. So um, that is important. And just the leadership that that I've been able to count on in the brokerage has been tremendous. Mm -hmm. So um, that is something that I I don't think that everyone gets gets uh, <laughs> how important it is. Mm -hmm. And really, as a, as a realtor, you really are out on your own for the mm -hmm. you, know, you feel like it. You feel like you're on your own for the most part, but you don't have to be. You uh, there are so many different uh, resources that are available to feel connected and supported. And I think that's the main thing as an entrepreneur, you don't want to be in it alone. And um, that's why during this time, it's been so important for us to stay connected with our, you know, our network of uh, referral sources and mm -hmm. just our partners, you know, just to, as well as our customers and our clients, but just to stay mm -hmm. connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And what a lot of people may or may not know is that, you know, um, and you know, we touched on this earlier, but realtors are independent contractors. So even though they work in a brokerage, they are their own business owner. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of having a, a strong brokerage, as you said, gives you, um, they give you a lot of tools and structure though, even though you are an independent contractor, you're working under a specific brokerage so that you choose what works best in your wheelhouse. And then the tools that they have, are they things that you need to be more successful? Do they offer you the, the tools and the programs and the things that you need and support um, right. with those partnerships? So it's nice that you have ha had that opportunity and found that home. So let's talk about you as an entrepreneur just for a minute. So, um, one thing I like to ask people a lot about is um, your is I like to call it superpower. Some people feel a little overwhelmed by that. So let, maybe we we'll call it that. Let's let's call it like what are you you know, there's we all know there's 100,000 realtors in the world right. and every single one of them is very different. And so tell us what makes you what you know to be your personal what you do better than anyone else, you know, what is it that you makes you unique? Well, um, I, I, you know, I'm going to be very simple about it. it again, it's that, that um, the consciousness that I bring to the relationship, you know, what, why I, that I'm here to serve, um, that, you know, I'm not in it. I mean, of course, you know, I, I love the position that it gives me flexibility, freedom, you know, uh, financial gains and things like that. But I really am in it for the, the service and just to feel that I'm contributing. So, yeah, that's awesome. it's, it, it's really on a one on one thing, but I do believe that my ability to listen a little bit closer, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit slower and, <laughs> you know, and be able to communicate with someone the way they need to communicate. Mm -hmm. That is that is the key to my success, I do believe, because you've got fast talkers who want to listen fast and talk fast. And you've got slow talkers who want to talk slow and listen slow. You've got people who want to be communicated with every day and want to know what's happening every day and others that don't want to know a thing until the check is in the mail, you know? So you have to know what, what's important to each person and mm -hmm. they don't always tell you, you have to listen for cues, you know? Like so um, I just, I think that's my superpower. It's all, it always has been. I love it. I love it. Well, and it, it, it obviously is a continuing theme in, in our conversation. So when you think about your business, what is the thing that, just totally um, lights you up. What sets your the hair on your arms standing up? What sets you on fire? Like, oh my God, when this happens, I feel like oh, I'm, I'm doing exactly what I wanted. And it all came together. It was all perfect. Oh, it, I know it really. I mean, you know, it's it's a it's a roller coaster ride. Okay, so mm -hmm. it's uh, just being able to hold on to that that the rails, right? But you know, when it's yeah. getting when it's getting rough. Re invariably somebody will come along and say, Oh D, I when when I met you, you changed my life. You just I remember this little lady I had, she said, I saw you on the side. I literally met her on the side of the road. And she said, You changed my life. <laughs> you know, 
Or oh when somebody says to me, you know, uh, you're the real deal. Uh, that means a lot to me. Um, and I've had my clients say that, that, um, that they couldn't have done it without me. So I, I don't think I don't, they don't have to say those types of things. And um, I believe they mean them and that makes it worth it to me. You know, yeah, so, uh, that's awesome. That I just, I can see it in your face. I can <laughs> feel it in you're saying it. Oh, that just feels so good. It's really cool. Um, and that's what I mean. You know, all of us have tried different things. You know, you, you like you said, you know, you thought, oh, working in the broadcast field. Oh, cool. Or all these different things that you thought, oh, might have been the thing. But you know it when you're in it, when you're yeah. doing it, when you feel it. What is that thing? And maybe it's not even the business that you're doing that sets you in that feeling. Maybe it's just a particular activity that, you know, a lot of people will run a business for a while, sell it and then go do something else. And mm -hmm. it's not the business that gave them the charge. It's something that is equal in all of those different areas and all these right. different things that they're working on. So I get it. I totally get that. And that's really cool. But I certainly could feel it as you were talking it. And that was really neat. That was a lot of fun. So um, tell us right now, do you have any um, kind of um, what would be if somebody was going to start a career in real estate, because you obviously have a lot of experience there, or if they wanted to start a business period, what's the one piece of advice you would say to somebody like right now, like, this is what happened to me and I would never do this, or this is definitely something I would do. Give us that one piece of gotta have advice. Gotta have a business plan. <laughs> gotta have, and, and um, gotta have a, a, a budget. And um, without those two things, you're kind of flying in the dark. You have to have a, you know, a plan of how you're going to get from A to Z and uh, what it's going to cost to do it because you can't go into money to business without, you know, spending a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. And you have to be prepared for that. And you have to be prepared for the setbacks. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there are going to be lean times and there's going to be, you know, really, you know, it's feast or famine. So when it's feast, you need to put away and mm -hmm. pay taxes and, you know, yeah. have, a, have a good business uh, manager if you can, or an accountant, something like that. And uh, treat it like a business. Absolutely. I love that because that's one thing that, you know, is that has been a theme in a lot of conversations we've had too, is people don't think about those pieces. They just jump in and they're doing it and it's okay, but you have to know where, what you don't know. And you have to reach out to people when you don't know and yeah. ask the questions. I'm not sure how to set this up or is there some pitfall that I need to know about? Um, so as we wrap up, give me, is there, um, tell us maybe some, some bumps, some skids, some, you know, potholes you've hit. It, maybe not in real estate, but like in business period and then, or in real estate, whichever, and then how you've figured out how to, you know, well, change, pivot, move things around a little bit so you can get to the next other side. Well, just, I mean, I can't help but bring up this whole COVID-19 and how that has mm -hmm. changed um, the real estate industry uh, dramatically. You know, we are considered essential, which is good, but um, we've had to do an extreme pivot and mm -hmm. we've done it very well. Not just, uh, you know, in my brokerage, but everywhere locally and, and uh, nationally, I do believe that, you know, we have taken the opportunity to figure out how to do things virtually, virtual open houses, mm -hmm. virtual tours, uh, doing the Zoom calls, meeting clients uh, over the, you know, the internet. So business is continuing. We are still working, <laughs> working very hard, working a little bit different, working much safer, but, um, but certainly, it's not stopping. So I, I do think that the real estate market is as healthy as ever. And once we get to a level of feeling safe, uh, that it's going to explode. And uh, we okay. certainly need some inventory because we have a bazillion buyers out there that want to take advantage of low interest rates. So there's that. Um, and I think it's just a matter of time that things are going to just going to pop. And that real estate may very well be one of the, the backbones that keep things together <laughs> as we uh, go into some tumultuous time. Nice. Nice. Very good information leading out of that. Deanne, do you have anything coming up? Do you have a house you're really trying to sell something that you can, you want to share with us, uh, with all the people that are watching that maybe something that you want to get out there on other channels other than just what, where you have, are getting it. Okay. So I would like to just briefly talk about a new program that I'm working with and it's, Very good. it's, a, reno it's a renovation program where uh, say you have a home that's 15, 20 years old and has never been updated and you want to get the best market value you can out of it. I'm working with a company now that will come in, do those renovations, not at no cost to you. you. They would actually put you up if you had to leave the home, 
while the renovations were being done during this time of um, quarantine, such what not, or stay at home. Um, but you don't pay for those until settlement. Okay. So there's no money out of pocket and the return on investment is incredible. So instead of, you know, just making your money back out of the whatever upgrades you did, you're actually getting a, a nice return on that and covering the cost of the construction. So it's a phenomenal program that I'm just ramping up and talking to sellers with, and I'd love to tell you more. Awesome. That would be great. If somebody wants to get in touch with you after today, how do they do that? Well, my uh, the easiest way is just southernmaryland.realestate. That's my website, southernmaryland.realestate. Southernmaryland.realestate.com. Nope, nope, southernmaryland.realestate. Oh, that's it. Real estate, cool. yeah, it's a real estate is a new domain. So, um, oh, that's yeah, very easy. cool. I didn't know that. Nice. Uh, but and you can also, Maryland, me, you've got you know, a covered lady on Facebook. Just not instant message me or um, however it's best for you. Right. Okay. Do me one favor when we're all done in the comments below, just put that information there. So, if anybody wants to find you, they can click right on those links if they can. And, okay. um, Guys, I want to tell you that I will be saving this broadcast um, for on my YouTube channel. So go on there. You can look at it on there. Subscribe to that YouTube because then you can see other interviews as well. I also will be reposting on um, tomorrow and tagging um, Dee in it so she can share it on her page and all of her different areas that she wants to share. She can do that tomorrow. And then um, probably in about a week or so, it'll be on my LinkedIn page maybe a little bit sooner. I'm trying to catch up from all the ones mm -hmm. we've been doing. So uh, it will be in all those different areas. And then Dee can share it on her pages as well on her, on her website and everything else. If you guys want to touch base with me, if you want to find out more about how I can help you share your messages a little bit differently, or if you know somebody who's an entrepreneur that I can talk to, we can get on, on this series. I would love to hear from you. would love yeah. to do that. So reach out to me here or ConnieFuxa.com. Either of those is great. Dan, thanks so much for being Thank on today. I really appreciate your time. It's been so good to see you. Thank you. All right, guys. So you take care. Stay tuned. Um, and we will be back tomorrow with a couple more interviews. And just stay tuned. If you go in, stay, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You make sure you don't miss any of those. It's just Connie Fuchs. They're really simple. And then stay tuned to my um, Facebook page so you can see those as well. And you guys, I hope you have a fantastic afternoon. I'll talk to you Thank later. Bye-bye.